I think Baby, I did it right. hold on. Yeah, I had misadvertently hit a button I should never have touched and didn't undo it. But I undid it, and now the world... Button, button. Who pushed the button? It was Flash. It was Flash. <laughs> yeah, but in a perfect world, <laughs> on the 28th day of July, we're running out of July... July, dude. July, July, July like a rug. I try to. Then we've got Graham Z being held hostage here to entertain the RLM with me. Lash. I'm hum. I'm hum. And Hi. I, I did cheat a little bit because had Grim help me get this, uh, I don't know, the internet restarted every fucking thing. So things I had been depending on to go to weren't there no more. So now I have to get Grim to help me get things back in order. Again, but we have but. bots and bodies for you to make fun of. But, 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 hey, everybody, over here on the RLM, which, by the way, hi, everybody listening to In a Perfect World over here on reallibertymedia.com. Com. I had see right up top Mr. Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Hey, Beetle, how you doing? Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? And Grim <laughs> apparently smoked his own stuff. Because when I checked in on the RLM this morning before I went to pull weeds, weeds everywhere, but not a one to smoke. When I got <laughs> pulling some of them in the garden, um, yes, Grimmy, Grimmy was having electricity issues. So apparently mm. he smote himself. Or, or maybe the electric company smote him. Ooh. I'm not sure. But it sucks when you can't do your percolator coffee. That would suck. Oh, yeah, case. wouldn't it? I'll bet Cirque would have a mental breakdown. That is why we are getting a gas stove. Good point, yeah. Maybe maybe uh, we'll build with something out in the backyard for an emergency, a wood fire thing out of bricks. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But there I don't really – we're so well – Taken care of here. I don't. I don't really see the system failing us like it. It should, <laughs> but it don't. It should, but it don't. Anyway, yeah. where were you? Bada bing, bada boom. I am at Moose Coil. Moose Coil. Yes, Moose rocket girl. stove. Those are freaking awesome. Yeah. And actually, see. I saw a video of a little Chinese gal that made a little. It was like her bread oven. And <laughs> excuse me, she cooks other stuff in it too. But uh, she made this thing and it looked like a kitty cat. It was so cute. In any case, Moosey! Hey, Moose. How you doing? Oh, yeah. The rocket stove to go with my rocket chair. Booyah! <laughs> I just got to make sure that I don't have uh, the back of my rocket chair facing the rocket stove well, just in case no. I should have emissions issues. <laughs> it's a rocket sofa now. You're flying for two these days, remember? That's true. Yep. That's true. And and he, you know, he keeps saying, honey, are we going to have to look at the floorboards? They keep creaking. Yeah, I know. He's so nice. <laughs> I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. Hi, Miss Kate. And anti, anti is here, as hey, well as Chow Sedoni. Got the O going on in the Chow oh, the, oh, the big the, O. The, There's lots yeah. of them. Look, there. everybody's got a fucking O here. Until you. I know, even Psycholo yeah, has an O. But you break the O chain. Yeah, I do break the O chain. Yeah. Chloe's got an O, and Flash, somebody's got an O. Oh, Miss Kate is listen while she works. Do, 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 do. I, uh, I spent time with my daughter and a grandchild over the weekend, so I got caught up on my cartoon watching. Just so. so if I start singing like Oompa Loompa songs or something, it's because I got to watch the original Willy Wonka and then the Johnny Depp Willy Wonka. So I'm Oompa Loompa songed out. Oh, I, so would, they might definitely, spill out. I would definitely blame the weed. Blame the weed. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah, I would yeah. do. I would never own up to the Oompa Loompa thing. I'd just <laughs> say I was high and I don't know. It was reliving my childhood again. Leave me alone. There you go. Oompa there you loompa. go. I'm here, kind of, sort of, but I might oompa loompa. Oompa loompa doopa dee doo. I got a JJ's 999 JJ. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> wow. wow, we found the Whee! end of the internet, everybody. Welcome to Purgatory. We'll be taking your name. Yes. And- 
and a small deposit for your stay here. Yes, but wait, there's more. Please, I see Mike Brower in the chat, as well as uh, print, as in in print. Rob Woik, who fired up the bubbler and talked about getting rocks and, and rocket stoves and and all kind of way cool stuff and things and all kind of and Lego moos. Ooh. I also see trust no one. Well, thank you, trust well, no one, for that little information about ants. I did not know that. Oh, yeah. Ants. About ants. Me, me neither. We got a oof stuff. Now, see, Ooh. whenever I see oof, I think Ooh. of veggie tails. Wow. Veggie tails, veggie oh. tails. Can you tell I have grandchildren? <laughs> well, I can tell you have access to um Dangerous narcotics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, grandchildren's a good excuse, too. Yeah, that's a good excuse. Go with the grandchildren yeah. story. Okay, it's a grandchildren. That's, that's what it, it is. Yeah. I quit doing coke, Moosey, because the bubbles hurt my nose. Um, I also see the lovely Miss Van Meter is here, as well as Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel. Thank you, Miss Vanna White Bot. We got a W4 DKD has come between Vanna and Weatherdork <laughs> again. This is almost getting to be like an RLM soap opera kind of thing. Hmm. I also see the Phantom is here. Hey, Phantom. <coughs> Excuse me. It's that fucking COVID. <sighs> It is. <laughs> it's COVID. If you infect it has me through to do that. with the fact that I'm having issues with swallowing and breathing at the same time. Yeah, but if you infect me through the headphones, we'll make history. We'll be sure. icons, popular beyond okay, our wildest. But, oh. but if I infect you hmm. through the headphones, yeah. then will I be automatically guilty of manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter? I'm just checking, hmm. you know, for my defense. I've. I've yet to think I, I was. Defense. I'm not going to die I, of the common cold, Mary. I'm sorry to oh. disappoint you. Bring well, on guess, your fucking COVID. I don't care. I ain't afraid. I was just going to tell you that I have a nice chain link fence up, and it yeah. does a wonderful job of stopping mosquitoes yeah. from leaving the yard. Exactly. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. moving along. Moving along. Hey. Asmo 2 is here, as well as the Cyborgian Noodle. Hey, be touched exactly. by the Cyborgian noodliness of it all. Yeah. We also had some NCIV, which we have reached the end of civility. Yeah. Just say it. Oh, yeah. It's been dead Nobody for can a while. be civil with this mask thing going on. No. It's just snitches on the beaches. I have stars upon stars, and you have no stars upon yours. So you cannot shop where we shop. Wow. Until you put a star on yours. Really? Dr. Seuss touched on this about 40, 50 years ago, people. Read it. Are you feeling the love? I mean, really? Are you feeling it? Can you feel the uh, love? I'm, I'm just trying to wipe love. it off my fucking... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Frumpy Woik is here. Hey, Swampy. I am Lone Frog. Hey, Froggy. How you doing, hon? And looky there, we got a Lurky too. Or is that Lurkle? Lurkle. I, now that's me. Lurkle. That's Lurky lurkle too. It's like yeah. Urkel with a Lurkle. Kind of. Wait, lurky has a lisp. He's ashamed of it. So he, he only types. There's nothing wrong with having a lisp. There is if you're Unless him. you've got the COVID. Oh, the and COVID then you lisp. lisp. And your spittle mm. goes on everybody. Mm. Even when they're wearing a mask. Be afraid! Right away. Mm. Okay. okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. I know. <laughs> WJ2002 is also here as well as push a pencil. You're not supposed to push a pencil. You're supposed to let it flow. You're supposed to push a pecker. A peckle. Oh. A pecker. A pickle. No. no, you're supposed to pull that, aren't you? I don't. I get confused. They call it a blowjob, <laughs> but you really have to suck <laughs> Papa Papa Pond Sauce is here as well as Red advertising. Sox. Red Sox. Now, Red Sox, please uh, be sure to not to not bathe with anything white or it will turn pink. Oh, yeah. Just that's saying. Right. That's your healthy, handy tip of the day. Cool. Um, Papa Papa Pond. Oh, I already did that. Smart ass. Smart hey, ass. smart ass. Yeah. It's the smartiest smart ass ever. Mm. We also got the holiest Roger ever. Ami, 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 ami. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Z-Pix. 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 
epic. Uh, I missed an epic um, mask. Oh, oops, that you have to push a pencil deck. Oh, oh. I, 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 but I missed a. Uh, oh, you got me. I missed a massive uh, mask debate on the RLM the other day because I was sleeping. A mask debater. Yeah, they got them even on RLM apparently. So. Well. Yeah. And I was making a point of saying this, that most of the people uh, that do radio live on the reallibertymedia.com are of the non-mask-wearing persuasion. But, alas, I was wrong. <sighs> yeah, but I missed the show where they were talking about they wore masks for their ah. safety and pleasure and shit. Hmm. Well, the Lone Ranger wore a mask. Yeah. But to the 25... And, and actually, yeah. what? if you're more concerned about the COVID, hmm. you should really wear a mask over your eyes, too, because most people get infections through their eyes. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I don't care. If I, you know, I've lived long enough. Fuck's sake. How long can this go on? <laughs> I mean, come on. So... To be sitting here cowering, I'm just amazed it still happens. Nah. But I did want to bring something to your attention about certain... Now, without naming anybody particularly, we'll use a, yeah, an age and a, an agenda. And it might be funny as fuck. It might die, but this, this might be pretty good. Okay, To you mask-wearing females out there in radio land, I ask you this. After the cock, are you really afraid of a little sneeze or a dribble? Hmm? Really? Because, I mean, uh, women have been known to, you know, enjoy the wiener over lifetime here. And it seems like that's a little bit less of a mess <laughs> than a little cough or a sneeze from a few feet away. So I'm a little, you know, beside myself that you make such a big fucking deal out of that, you know, considering what you did with, with those. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're a virgin or maybe a lesbian. Then I'm not talking to you. There you go. Well, I just, to me, it's like, uh, wow, if, if, if you tell me I have to wear a mask because I might sneeze and the spittle might get on you, you must think I'm like an overachiever sneezer because even when I was young and I have, I have several siblings that are of the male persuasion. And so I used to think I was a boy for a long time and I don't, I couldn't even spit six feet. What do you mean? I can, I can get spittle that far at you. What the hell? Although I got it while well, Flash was talking about the mask mask debaters, um, I saw this over on Twitter. I'm gonna put it in the chat. A freaking woman with a mask chewing out a mother and her little ones, and looking directly at the little ones and saying, "I hope you die." What the actual fuck? Yeah, they're helping. <clears throat> And, and, you know, I keep getting told that it's it's us unmaskers that are irresponsible and dangerous. But it's all I always see the ones wearing a mask that are wishing all kinds of vile and disgusting things mm -hmm. on wow. us. It's like, wow, woman, ain't you just an overachiever at the nasty? Well, you got to really understand. <clears throat> We're all scientists now. We have the internet, dear. So yes, and we know. And I do have a diploma from the Facebook School of Medicine. I was given it hmm. by a niece. But we all know how far air travels between two living beings now because they told us. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, if you're outside that six foot zone, you're safe. Huh. So I don't want to hear any more of somebody across the room saying. Damn it, woman, that fart stinks. Because <laughs> wow. It cannot well, travel that but, far. But, Mary, no. d people don't seem to give any attention to the concept. of the, the, the cornerstone of all this is it's the common cold 
being represented to the public as a lethal virus, and it is not. All the information connected to it has all been proven to be 100% exaggerated bullshit. And here we are with what we think are intelligent people debating whether or not to cover your fucking face in public like some kind of slave. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> Fuck you. And if there is a risk, like there's always been in life, of catching something and dying, what made it so important in 2020? Oh... Oh, I have no idea, but I'm reading the chat. And yeah. Up says he can blow his nose six feet. Farmer, farmer, style farmer blow style, yeah. Yeah. Mm, no, no. Yeah, but see, I don't have my hands to show it, but uh, I remember this girl talking to this other fella and telling him with her hands, no, that's not 12 inches. <laughs> she was showing him, you know, two <laughs> Oh. That's oh. two, not mm. 12. <laughs> so, yeah, men exaggerate one, about distance and length and shit, if you know what I mean, Missy. One is a magic number when it's placed in front of another. Mm. It automatically makes it bigger. Oh, yeah, that's all right. We will, yeah. we will fuck like with the number. Zero is a magic number when it's placed behind a number. If you put it in front of a number, it doesn't do doodly squat. But... If you put it behind a number, <laughs> it's magic. Fuck you. It's all of a sudden bigger. More splendiferous. Well, still. You know, beyond all the rules of engagement and what you're supposed to or not supposed to do, when I was growing up, what the other guy was doing was none of my business until the other guy got into my business. My father yeah. taught me all about this. And... I didn't grow up afraid of getting anything except for maybe wrecked because I'm not watching my, you know, speed right or wrecking the car, uh, falling off the bike, something like that. That kind of wreck. But illness, wreck, what? Are you fucking stupid? How do you live all these years, right? And then they, they're going to bullshit them with all these stories about vaccines that, obviously, if you can read a book, you can find out these things never worked. We were living experiments. We have been. We always will be. We are now. Enjoy the ride or break up the family because people are, they're not going to agree with you. I feel like such a lab rat. You are. Grammy rat. Yeah. There you go. Or it's my tail. Oh, uh, I, I think, I think Wayne's. I want a tail. The male is in charge of the tail department. <laughs> Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say, except I'm trying to type. We are feeling like lab rats. Well, because if you think well. it through clearly, I mean, it's obviously there's nothing proven about anything. We're listening to other people tell us their story. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's not history or knowledge. That's um, opinion. And the opinion is so overrated in our society. I mean, goddamn, if you insult somebody's opinion, they actually get mad at you. Like, an opinion has a fucking value. It does. It does not. Only it to the too. user. It has the same value as a good fart. Oh, okay. It's, well, if you're going to put it like that. Yeah. Hmm. So hmm. there. Okay, well, then tell, tell the people out there in Radio Land, why is it you feel laboratory to pond? Huh, huh, huh? Why is it that? Because number one, I don't like pricks. <laughs> because they're usually very pointy, which means they're pokey, mm -hmm. and they draw blood and they cause pain. Oh, that. And so I do not like pricks. Oh. Hmm. And they're always coming at me with some kind of one prick or another, and it's bad enough dealing with the two-legged kind. Yeah. But but when you got a two-legged kind bringing a pokey one at you, it's like no. Hmm. I, I ain't having it. Well, well, I've got a theory, but I'm afraid to say it on the radio because Billy Boy Bob Bo might get it and use it. Nah, give it a fucking try. What the fuck? You know what I, I think? Like. I think what would sell 
it would either sell this uh, vaccination program to everybody or it would shut it completely down. And all Billy Boy has to do to prove me wrong or right, add heroin to your vaccine. Problem solved. <laughs> Therefore, oh, yeah. even if you don't get sick, even if you do get sick, you're going to get fucked up. So you'll go, hey, it's cool. <laughs> and but. you will get addicted. Oh, that takes Good. a while. No, 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 more. no, no. No, see, that's, yeah, but, that's okay. the story. You There's don't... like 77, depending on the state, there's like 77 vaccines that mm. a child gets before they start. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Ooh, yeah. never mind. There goes my whole theory. Fuck it. Yeah. I was so close to an answer, too. Well, back to the you drawing were. board. You oh, were this close. Yeah. See, well, I that's put that out of my mind because I'm an adult now and I live around adults. There are no children in my immediate today, ever, just looking at them. So I kind of forgot, yeah, the system where I'm from does these terrible things to the ch- children's. And I, pr- I bet on the on the chat I seem like a horrible person, too, because I would say, fuck the children. There was nobody there to protect me. I survived, so you're on your fucking own. You figure it out. I well, did. I'm bummer dooted because I got the booted from the rl m m m Uh-oh. Well, I don't see it. Yeah, you sure did, didn't you? Or did you? Does it show me in there? I don't see you there no more. Nope, you're gone. There's me. Wow. Well, you just got to go back in again. I know. I got the bot boot. Yeah, that happens. I wonder what that's about. I think uh, Grim said Comcast was really giving him some grief about two, three weeks ago. So there's Mm. probably ah, glitches and shit in the Internet that just do these things. So we'll always be mad. Oh, I just kind of laugh them off. Well, I get I get pissy first yeah, because yeah, you know yeah. why waste a good pissy? So I get pissy <laughs> and then I laugh yeah, off. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you should run for office in Chicago. They they like politicians like you. No, I don't look enough like Beetlejuice. What's all the hubbub, bub? <laughs> well, I, am I still the only living human being that will accept that society has failed? And this is just the smoldering tail of a dying animal. We're, we're, it's not even life anymore, Mary. What I'm reading and what I'm seeing, not what I'm physically doing. I'm being an observer well, and a reporter. I really do think it's somebody's computer program and it got infected. Mm. And all of this nonsense is happening and the system is getting ready to crash. Mm. And then there will be a reboot. And then everybody will come back just good as new. <laughs> yeah, like your computer after it's had a system crash ever came back good as new. Like it was so was good computer. before the fucking uh, COVID hit. Remember, that was all climate change for the last 20 years. Being beaten down by these fucking Dudley Do-Right morons and their fucking, the world is going to end tomorrow story. I'm, God, the I world, miss Greta. I don't. Where's Greta? I don't. How dare you? Oh no, I still ha- I still get the hair. How dare you? So I hope a, I, I hope a whole fucking tribe of wild boars from Germany find her before you do. But 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 uh, there's some pretty ferocious animals too. You know, Denmark had to build a fence on the border from Germany to keep the the boars away. <laughs> <laughs> not the not people. You can jump over the fence, oh. but if you're a boar, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> you're you've been okay. bored. And yeah, I know. I yeah. I've been. I was sitting here thinking yeah. about boars. That's that's a hog. But the first place my brain went was <laughs> someone that talks in a monotone voice that tells you about their vacation <laughs> twenty years ago, and you just want to. That's the kind of boar. That's the kind of boar that I would oh. run away from, and I don't run. I'm just saying. Yeah, but, but you're feeling like a lab rat, seriously. Actually, I don't feel like a lab rat. I mean, I know, I know there, somebody out there is pushing buttons and playing with shit, and you know, all I've got to say is if I, me, what is me, not this body, but the what is me, it'll keep going. And I'm sure the Earth will keep going. Now, I'm not saying that the Earth is going to keep humans around, 
But, hmm. you know, you all keep pushing buttons and fucking with shit, and Mother Earth is just going to finally say, okay, y'all y'all ever seen what a dog does when it's got fleas? <laughs> so, yeah. Asteroid. Ooh, and I saw something the other day about an asteroid that's supposed to be coming coming to a planet near you. Um and this time it just might hit us. Well, it just might. And then it just might not. So No, it's not gonna. No. Yeah. See I, we don't I'm have I'm trying to picture it from, you know, outer space and Earth seeing the asteroid coming yeah. and then just as the asteroid gets really close, yeah. Earth pulls up its skirt and dodges to the side and goes, Ha fooled ya. Yeah. Well, do you That's know, what I'm saying. Do you ever think about how difficult it truly is for two foreign objects to occupy the same point in, in time and space at the same moment? And then the bigger... The odds are, yeah, the odds right. are astronomical. So the bigger the objects, the actually the harder they are to hit from a distance. I mean, so you're... You're flying through space, you're an asteroid, and you're going, hey, look at me, I'm cool, I'm flying, and all of a sudden, Earth gets in your way and fucks up your trip. I don't think so. I think that's well, just movie talk. And, well, that's that's where those those bureaucratic whatever they are from <laughs> the to the galaxy come in and say, <laughs> we're trying to make way for well, intergalactic superhighway, <laughs> you must go. <laughs> You know what I saw today on the internet? What's <laughs> they're, that? They're going to test a helicopter on Mars. Oh, really? I don't know how they're going to do this, but this is what NASA is proclaiming to the reading world out there amongst you. Those of you who can read NASA, wow, what what are you people smoking? But that's another that's a topic for another show. Okay, so how <clears throat> how are they going to get the helicopter to Mars? <laughs> I don't. I mean, know. who's going to? Is someone going to pilot it, or are they going to ship it up, have, you know, get it from Amazon and have it shipped up there? And then who's going to put it together? Or maybe Ikea. Maybe Ikea will send somebody. No, Ikea doesn't put your shit together either. Hmm. I'll bet you NASA had something to do with the Kennedy assassination. You know, because the explanation to the public about the Kennedy assassination is just as fucking lame as the stories we get from NASA. <laughs> They're great writers, and it's very entertaining. But oh uh, well, yeah. Gone to yeah. the moon multiple times in one story, and then you read something else that says, "Well, we went there once, but we lost the technology and can't seem to get back." <laughs> and the, the government will never. It doesn't matter what they do; they'll murder you and still not apologize. They'll give you money. Well, but you see, it was like this. We right. we hired Billy Bob. You know, he's an idiot cousin of Mark, the engineer over there. Yeah. And Billy Bob come in, and, you know, all he had to do was dump trash cans. That's all he was hired to do. <laughs> okay, sweep the floor, too. But apparently, apparently somebody had accidentally put something too close, and nobody bothered to let everybody else know that Billy Bob was kind of like a cat. And so if it's close to the edge, Billy Bob's going to knock it off. Mm -hmm. So Billy Bob knocked off. The technology into the trash can, and oh, then yeah. he swept the floor and dumped it in the trash can on top of it, and then he took the trash out. And that's what happened, honest and for true. Oh. Wow, I, I sure am glad you're not a pot smoker. <laughs> Man, can you imagine the shit you'd come up with if you were? Let's get Mary stoned and sit back and hear some tall tales. There you go. Well, there you go. But you know what I'm saying about this whole... All the charades before us, they've been per, uh, performed on television, they've been brought to us through the media, they've been brought to us on the internet. And you've got equal amount of information to both prove and disprove anything that you feel like doing. But this mask is the final, they finally figured out how to control us all by only controlling percentage. See, they balanced out the right equation finally. Now it's masks. They've tried everything. Nothing's worked. Nigger, Jew, Spick, Pansy, Queer, uh, 
transgender, all this shit didn't go any fucking where compared to what they did with us in a month with a mask. Well, and obviously the murder hornets were just not going anywhere. No, that no, no. See, that was too much. The mask is simple. Anybody could understand. Yeah. See, that's the beauty of this simplistic uh, medical advice that people get. It's so logical, even a monkey can understand it. It's just not true. But it sounds true. But it's not true. There is no way in this life that you, Mary, can physically give me a virus by sneezing or spitting or coughing where I can breathe it in. It's not possible. Now, <sighs> it could be injected into your bloodstream. There's other ways to activate illness besides breathing it, okay? Like you were saying before, you can get it through your eye. Yep. Okay, well, eyes. I've had weak, bad vision my whole fucking life. So I would think that if the two of us, me and you, if one of us was going to be afraid of catching a lethal virus that's going to kill me, it should be me. And I don't feel any more convinced of the stories that I've heard or the information I've seen pointing it to be true, so I don't take it serious. While the rest of the world is falling apart, all over, see, they think it's all about this mask thing. It's got nothing to do with that either. But that's the tool necessary to control the collapse. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How many more trillions of dollars can the Fed just magically print up? I mean, is everybody alive that understands English completely ignorant and they don't know this can't go on another year? It's finished. You're done. When you're borrowing $3 trillion a couple times a year, you're in some serious fucking trouble. Oh, and that's just what they tell you that they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. While society falls the fuck apart, you're watching gunfights on the fucking streets of America in 2020 because the people can't get along. What the hell? It's, it's manufactured. We're being controlled to do these things. No, not me, because I luckily got out of that place. Not you, because you're in a small area. But those who live in the city where I once dwelled, and I know a lot of those cities, so it's, it's kind of personal in a way. Because I lived in places. I spent years there. Wow, that was fun. I had a greatest time. And here I am, an old man, reading about rioters and cops looting and stealing and shooting each other. And What? This was supposed to be when we had it all together and you know we could uh, do things. Now everybody's on lockdown. There's no travel. There's no uh, commerce. You're just stuck in your little community. See, this is what happens when you cage animals. Whoa, I didn't think of that. Please go continue. Uh, that's that's just that pretty much it. You have caged animals. People are feeling trapped, and and they see you know inside their little imaginary bird cage that they have constructed for themselves, and they see someone outside of the bird cage, someone walking around, uh. you know, without their own little bird cage to go with them, and they're like. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, uh, I'm in a birdcage. It doesn't make any difference that it's one of my own making. But I'm in a birdcage. You should have to be in one, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. the problem. Wow. We in have a nutshell, clanging, yeah. invisible cages. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> well, do you recognize... See, I recognize my marriage as... This is my, my prison where I live. Because I... Volunteered to do this thing. I promise. Made my, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. But when I was free to come and go how I wanted in my younger days, uh, if all this had happened, hmm, I wonder how I would have reacted to it. I don't think it would have been. Uh, I don't like joining groups. You've always heard me bitch. If there's crowds more than 150 people, I'm done. I'm going home. Oh yeah. Well, I understand that. Yeah, but I've been saying that for years. You're my witness. The radio podcast mm -hmm. is my, uh, you know, like Vinny would say, I'm leaving a record behind me for people to trip over someday and find, hey, wow, what was this all about? Oh, 
Yeah. Okay. You know, I right. I keep thinking, hundred years from now, if humans are still on this planet, they're going to be looking back and either going, "Wow," or "Whoa," you know, one of the two. But that's probably going to it's probably going to be a monosyllabic kind of comment because everything else will be uh, 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 how. <laughs> Uh, 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 what? Yeah. How how did people survive this madness? And I don't know that society will survive it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I already think it hasn't. No, oh, I, think I think it's think finished now. Probably small pockets of what one well, would consider society. Well, so, well, what I mean. Okay, let, let's simplify this just a tad. Then, uh, if you're not surrounded, like Mike. Uh, Salt, Salt Lake City Mike just got out of the city and went went to the country, so uh-huh. he's all he's just fucking happy as fuck. He escaped it and he's all you know got a little bit of land and that and he's out there where it's quiet. Yep. Now that okay, that was the opposite of what I was raised to to look for. <laughs> so I had all that indoctrination and competition and shit just drilled into me that took years to get the fuck away from it. But yeah. the way that I did it is, well, I've seen quite a bit of information about heroin addicts in my life. And I treated my addiction to money as I, I thought a, an, an addict should treat his addiction to a drug. Stop doing it. So I did. Yeah. Well, it wasn't easy, but, you know, I didn't I didn't make any attempt to, to uh, go back to the United States and go to court and fight and all that. I just gave everything back. I just here, you keep all the shit, all of it, even the stuff I bought, you have it. And uh, because I think of that, uh, that's not the side of me that's willing to fight. Money doesn't, nah, no, no, no. There's more to this existence than accumulating a bunch of shit and sitting in a room with it. Yeah. That's what I thought. And because of it, I ended up with a decent partner in a small place in Denmark, and it's very comfortable. But mm-hmm. I've got all this input with my friends and you know family members and whatnot about how bad things are in other places. So it does get my attention. Yeah. But as far as visual, you know, physical feeling and all that. And I don't, I don't encounter any, my, I'll tell you, uh, today I went to the bar, have a couple of beers, ponder what I might want to chat with you about tonight. And, uh, I run into the, one of my buddies and this guy's very soft spoken and his English is about, he struggles with words, certain words, just I he can't remember them. So it's a quiet, slow conversation. And we talk about things like, how insignificant people think they are when they're truly not. <laughs> well. <clears throat> uh, uh, in a bar, in a foreign country, we're not arguing about should Trump or Biden be the president or none of that. It was, yeah. we think this about human beings, about our fellow life forms. Not John is a prick and, you know, Nancy is a cunt. That we're beyond all that kind of talk. I have friends I can go to for gossip if I want to. Well, there you go. Well, I think That's it's all. Counts. Well, I think it's water seeks its own level, and I try to prove it. Yes. Yeah, you know, and and you can repel. You know, I could turn my back on Mark and not speak to him, and it would just use some. You know, I'm doing something else to avoid it, and. Nobody would give a fuck. It's not like I'm not being held hostage. I'm invited into a conversation about some pretty deep ideas. And most of the local people drink, and that's not what they're into. Yeah. So me and Mark, we know this, so we talk amongst ourselves about it. Instead of group conversation would be something different, but when we're just sitting talking alone, then it's like these deep concepts that other people don't have opinions about. <laughs> Or the opinion that they have is what they learned on the internet or the TV set. Or the opinion that they have, they just don't feel like sharing. 
True. Or, yeah, well, that would come to that, like being on the radio, because I remember being nervous about doing it, but I wasn't like, I ain't doing the radio. I was just nervous about actually doing it for whatever reason that ever bullshit was about, but I got over it. And other people, I've been on a crusade to try to bring in some of the chatters that have so much to say in the chat. I think they mm-hmm. should do a radio podcast and, and discuss these things openly with people, verbally, so we can hear it. But it doesn't go anywhere. They think I'm joking and picking them, picking uh, jokes at them and stuff. Uh, are you picking on people again? You know, I never know who is going to tell me the shit that makes me curious. Like Larry Woods? I the, How the fuck, if I didn't listen to Larry... I would have never figured Larry had anything to say. But Larry was, but I listened and went, wow, that's incredible. And other people listen and they don't, they, well, that's, that's nice. They're not inspired by the idea of an energy source that doesn't ruin your fucking life. In fact, I would say from, you know, the RLM, there's a, about, Probably half and half. Half of the people on RLM are very well aware of these things. You know, they're they're knowledgeable about them. I came in blind. I didn't know that I was getting bad electricity. Somebody had to explain that to me in a simple way that I could follow. You know, there's a lot of people that have no freaking clue. Mm. I had no idea. Right. I, I really didn't. There's until so much to know. Larry. Yeah. Yeah. And every time you learn something new, you realize how much you don't know. And that sounds like such a paradox, but oh my God, every time I learn something new, it's like, holy shit, now what else don't I know? So, yeah. It's a fun part about learning things, I think, is huh. <clears throat> the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. Do shit, you know yeah. It, I think that, yeah, as... Some of us get older. I hear more of that amongst my age peers and people who are older than me will comment to that. You know, the older I get, wow. And, and I believe that that's all based on the accepting that what we were taught was bullshit. Because I, if you were taught a lie, and it structures your thinking process. Yes. Okay, so when I look back on the the big important things when I was growing up between, say, 4 and 12, those the years where they're molding you to become whatever you're going to be. Look at the input we had. Kennedy assassinated live on television for the whole fucking world to see, and the film was doctored. And the story was mutilated. And all the players were, uh, half of them weren't even brought into the story. They were... Invisible. Grim was yeah. talking to Gary um, Gary L about this last night in a little bit more detail, but it just it inspired me to to remember. Wow, yeah, everything Kennedy to uh, nine eleven to the virus, and but we've got this mm-hmm. sitting public that is not capable of understanding the history. We're repeating it. It's over the same uh, financial crisis of. Uh, 20, what was 1920, the crash, 30s. All this stuff was done on purpose by banking. And you can find this in print now, and people will talk about it. It's in print. There's 50,000 sources to see it at. Yet, they want a stimulus fucking check from the government. <sighs> see, I was listening wow. to one of the Open Minds shows yesterday. And uh, uh, Regina Meredith that does the show um, was said something that just totally fits right here. She says, you sit there and you look at these smartphones that a lot of us carry around, and we have the knowledge of the world at our fingertips. We can access just about anything if yeah. we know what yeah. we're looking for. Yeah. At our fingertips, we have so much knowledge mm-hmm accessible on the internet now be careful because a lot of it's dropping off because well oh we can't have that getting out again somebody actually saw that bit let's delete it from the internet but there is so much information out there and people can find all this information and all this knowledge but how much wisdom do they get out of it 
-hmm. because there's a big difference between knowing something and gaining wisdom. Mm. Oh, I've got a link that I found today. Sorry to interrupt you for this one, but you might appreciate it. No, that's that's fine. I found, that was basically the point. But I found a you, you brought this to mind that I saw it. I'm going to post a copy of it in the reallibertymedia.com chat if you guys uh, care one way or the other. But it's a, about a five-minute link. And what the guy does is he talks about how safe vaccines are, but he puts up signs in writing that tell you the opposite. And he explains the AI can't read, can't read the, this yet. It's It's got to be seen by human before it gets pulled. <laughs> Yeah, so I posted a copy of it in the RLM if you want to snag a copy and look at it later, Mary. But I, I just thought it was so, well, because th there is layers of intelligence. People that are way smarter than us, people that aren't as smart as all that, 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 that right? So that mm -hmm. they are in the world where AI is used. They have a better, uh, under, like Cirque. Cirque works with it, so she's got a, a functioning understanding of it. Me, I just see it as a thing. It's there. It's got a name. Bleh. Then this guy comes on, uses AI as a reference, and tells you the AI can't read these signs yet. Is what he's telling you. <laughs> but yeah, but they can. They they uh, delete you for what you say now. Yes. So they're bringing back freedom of speech on the freaking uh, YouTube by trying to outsmart them by using signs to read. To just flood them. If you flood them with a million or two million of these, <laughs> oh man, you can fix this mess. The the problem is people have trouble getting a single message correctly and ingesting it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but when you send them mixed messages, unless you have something on the screen that says turn your volume off you're going to have an awful lot of people that are going to sit there and go, see, see, he says, you need to, you need to. because seriously, yeah. you no, know, but a lot the, of people yeah, just yeah. flat ass, yeah. they, they don't have the cognitive ability yeah. no. to listen to one thing and read something else and realize that what they're reading is the important part. Well, could it be the, the vaccinations did the job that they were supposed to do and we, the public, who are old enough to remember what life was like once upon a time, can see the changes in behavior. Yeah. And that's see, why and they want to I don't know that assault. it's all blamed on the vaccines, though, because I, I think it's a multi-pronged assault. True. You've got but the vaccines, you've got the GMOs, you've got the glyphosate or whatever chemicals they're mm. putting in the air and well, putting in right. the water and putting in the ground and it's getting into the food and then uh, the animals eat it and they say it doesn't get carried on in the food <laughs> chain and yet when they <laughs> test it, it and then they test people that yes. have consumed it, then you can see that it's it's in the people that, you know, three stages away. So I think it's a multi-pronged assault, and yeah. each one builds upon the next. Okay, that's Just what like I was getting at. Means, right. You know, when they say that, oh, there's not enough to, to violate the, the MSDS codes or <sighs> any of that fun yeah. shit with, with aluminum or formaldehyde yeah. or this or that yeah. in a single injection. But stop and think of how many children only get one injection at a time. That's number one. Number two, does it get cleaned out of the system? Some of these heavy metals don't get cleaned out of the system, so it becomes a cumulative effect. But people don't take that extra step of reasoning, and that's where, like Rob Work said, you have knowledge and oh, knowing yeah. something. Oh, yeah. Wisdom is knowing what to do with it. Wisdom is knowing how to critically think and analyze. Beetle! And come to... Yep, there's Beetle. Beetle! But, you know, I think that's a lot of the problem is people have been taught for a couple of generations now what to think, not how to think. I agree with that. I'm geez, We're not arguing today. Why aren't we fighting about this stuff? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> because peace sells. Hmm. No, I sure doesn't. To that earlier no. today. Peace sells? Is that what you said? Yeah, Megadeth. Oh, well, the Ferengis beg to differ. 
Yeah, I know. The Ferengi. Fren- I actually watched the, to where I kind of got the gist of what a Ferengi is. The and, Jew. Wow. Ferengi is the yeah, Jew. Pretty much. Yeah. So they are. Yeah. Just Jews. And the Jews have no conscience. All they care about is profit, and their women are possession. There you go. Yes. Then the Ferengis even take it further. They don't even allow their women to wear clothes. Yeah. God, would I wish I was a Ferengi. <laughs> okay, stop and think about this just a little bit, okay? What? Because the world <laughs> has every different shape and size. <laughs> yeah. That's just like all of these men folk that were, I want to be, I can remember in high school, all the guys going, I want to be a gynecologist. I want to be a gynecologist. I didn't. And then they see, you know, like an old lady walking down the street or something, and you go, yeah, when you're a gynecologist, you get to check that shit out, too. Ooh, maybe I don't want to be a gynecologist after all. Ah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the same as what I was saying about if a 25-year-old woman is afraid of a little snot, Wow, she must be a drag in the bedroom. I have no idea. Oh, I'm just, I don't want to I'm know. volunteering you information from the other gender. Thank you. You you may not. It, you. Hey, there might be somebody out there in Radio Land that never thought about it. <laughs> I'm bringing it up. <laughs> That's and right. You know what's this, really crazy? El- this is the elephant balls in the room. <laughs> what? What's yeah. really crazy? No, you define well, crazy. Well, you know, they, they either get that that injection thing that, you know, makes them to where they don't get pregnant or they take the pill or whatever, and then they go, well, I don't need to, because, and I know I've heard this line before myself, and I've heard it used on other women, and it's like, really, you son of a bitch, you oh, here bastard? We go. You know, the, the whole, I'm not wearing a raincoat in the shower. Yeah. Okay, you do realize that raincoat protects both of you. Good Lord, you know. what kind of, you know, I don't just go out there and randomly have sex with I know, everybody I, I encounter. Even before I, know, I was married, you know, I was selective. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the younger girls right now. Well, I'm on the pill. Well, I'm I've too got old the to care about any of that. Well, I, I don't need to do, Weird honey, else. pregnancy's the least of your problems. There's shit out there that'll kill you. So, which even that shit is, but... You know, it's it's like the thought processes are interrupted. You That's know? what I was and referring to. And I don't know if it's a hormonal thing okay. or if it's a vaccine go. thing or what it right. is. That's what I was trying to start out with. When I realize in, in history now, I'm looking backward, and in year-wise, I can pinpoint areas in time where things socially shifted huge. Big things happened. And then I look back and I go, wow. And look at all the fucking people that were all of a sudden... Uh, being told they got to get shots. You got to get shots to get your kid out of the hospital. What? No, 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 no. That's not how it was when I was born. In fact... Yeah, and you have to get a hepatitis B shot, you know, which is for, like, usually intravenous drug users. Mm. Ooh, that baby's been in the womb for nine months. I wonder how many times it's injected. It's probably twitching right about now. Well, yeah, it just come out, came through a birthing process. You go through the Play-Doh Fun Factory thing of life and <laughs> tell me how good you feel. Well, Some bitch. I got a question for you then. Okay. Have we outsmarted ourselves? Maybe? No, I think we've outstupided ourselves. Well, no, yeah, but every, that, yeah, I really think yeah. that when you look at someone and you say, how stupid can you be? Mm. They take it as a challenge. <laughs> and I think society, when you go, society, how stupid can you be? Oh, Hold my beer. Watch this. I really think that's where we're at right now. Well, I'm still kind of sure. Uh, what's the word for it? I'm in shock in a way that things are so peaceful where I'm at, yet so violent everywhere else, apparently, from the reports. Like you. you you're so peaceful and quiet there in Maryville. Yeah. The, the big excitement is your neighbor played their music loud. Woo! It's annoying and all that horseshit, but... You know, if that's the biggest problem there is in life, it's not that bad. Nobody's leveling your neighborhood, you know? No. Mm. Although we did have somebody graffiti the burned church. And it's like, what the hell, some bitch? Well, somebody, somebody went inside and tagged it, which, you know, we've had, we've had some vehicles at, in the middle of the night hmm. come through hmm. and, 
and the reason I know about this is because my honey was telling me that they had driven into the uh, the yard where he, you know, where all their farm equipment and shit like that is at. Right. And they were snooping around, and we had seen the lights, and the dogs went nuts, so he went out to check it out. And people just driving off the highway, he said it was out-of-state tags. He didn't, you know, hmm. catch a tag number or anything like that, but... And uh, he said something to his boss yesterday about it, and the boss said, oh, yeah, yeah, they also went in, and somebody went in and tagged the church, too, and it's like, what the hell? This is like sleepy little Podunkville. Mm -hmm. You're cruising along down a two-lane highway, and you decide, oh, look, there's a burned-out building. I'm going to go tag it. Honey, that church burned down like 35 years ago. It just hasn't had sense to fall down yet. You know, tells you sucko part. Yeah, that tells you it's probably kids that saw something on the internet. Well, it tells me there's just dumbasses going down the highway. Which but, no, duh, come like on. I needed to be told that. Grown ups grown ups act come on. Don't you grow out of that shit at, at a certain time in life? I think I did. Apparently not anymore. Wow. Holy shit. Well, anyway. <sighs> I I do not I do not expect to ever uh Re return myself to the homeland. Anyway, good or bad, but I well, was sure as hell. found a new homeland. Yeah, but I should, well, I'm still connected to America through circumstance. Yeah. And uh, eh, I, mm, I'm going to miss it when it's gone. Things are going to change. You're going to have to, because you can't go on in perpetual violence. Otherwise, you're living in Palestine. This stuff has got to be ended, and it, and it won't be ended, but Telling me what I'm telling you. This is why I interpret the society I'm seeing has collapsed. Because once you get to this point, there's nowhere to go. You can't fix this. It's beyond fixing. Well, and I used to think it'll happen in the cities, but not out here. But then, you know, finding out someone was tagging, that, like, kind of gave me a little wake-up call. But, yeah, there's a highway. <laughs> and the occasional will come through. But now... And wow. on the plus side, now yeah. I am a little bit more alert of my surroundings, and it's like I pay attention to strange cars driving down. Oh the road. man, see that's the whole. That's what they took away from us is that innocence of the stranger, because uh, we used to have that. And now yeah. every stranger in every situation now in your life is a fucking uh, threat to you somehow because of circumstance. Uh, what? Well, I'm just voicing up an opinion here. Yeah. Through circumstance of daily life outside of your own, you know, not it's not even yeah. you doing anything; it's you reacting to the shit other people do. And yeah, there's no way not stranger to do that. danger, stranger danger. But yeah. right, but that was all given to us a little at a time over a lot of years. Yeah. 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 And I I think society and, finally caved in and gave into the selfishness about 1990. That's when it really took root. The early 90s, people started to value their little dollar bills and their jobs. And they started to seem to realize that this shit could be gone tomorrow, so i got to hold it. And the greed factor rose. And people stopped being nice to each other. And now we've got what we have, which is a result of turning a good situation around to a 180 and doing this, what we're doing. Stupid. Yeah. And yet... I still say hi to strangers. I still strike up conversations with the checker. I still do all of a sudden, but I I am a little bit more observant. I'm uh, not yeah. going to say oh, I'm yeah. wary, but yeah. I am more observant. Okay, but that's the door. That's what I mean. Is there was a time in my life personally where I never even thought of of being afraid of somebody else. I already knew who oh, the yeah. monsters were. They were I, I knew them by first name. But strangers weren't monsters until they showed me something that to fear. And now we've got a world full of people that all you got to do to scare somebody is not... Now, think about it. Go to a bank without a mask and somebody will be pissed at you for not wearing a mask to the bank? Have, have I you, know! You lost I your know. fucking like, collective minds or what? What the hell? It used to be, you know, don't... You cannot wear any kind of face covering entering this bank. And now yeah. you have to wear a face covering. Okay, what? slavery, people. That's there's no other way to. De well, there is a million ways to identify this, but there is only one true way, 
And the one true way is going to be the last road anybody wants to take. So there you have that. Well, because it's an ugly, rude awakening. And I'm yet, a slave to the man, baby. Okay. It could be an ugly, rude awakening, but it can also be, yeah, a rude awakening, but then you go, but wait, there's more. I can do this. I don't have to play. You know, until I, until my life gets to the point where I have to play their game, mm. I have to mm. play their game, I'm going to enjoy playing my own. So there. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, see, I'm still a social being. You know, I'm still from the, the big city. So that little bit of me, that tolerant thing, whatever, I don't know what it is. But I always end up wanting to go downtown. But then after I've been there for a little bit, wanting to return home. So yes. I found a balance where years and go. years back, I, man, I would stay out. <laughs> work, fuck you, you go to work. I, I don't need the money that bad, blah, blah, blah. I think I'll do this for a couple of days. <laughs> You know, you were talking about um, how we weren't scared of strangers and all that other yeah, fun shit, yeah, and that yeah. brought back a memory. Um, I was probably like in second grade and walking home with my brothers. <clears throat> Actually, one brother was racing the other brother to the corner with a friend, and I'm just walking along holding my books. And then all of a sudden, this car pulls up beside and in my hometown, the sidewalk was a good 10 feet away from the street. So, you know, plenty of distance there. Mm -hmm. But I'm walking along in my little Catholic school uniform and um, carrying my books. And this car pulls up and the door opens and says, hey, little girl, you want to come over here? And it's like, no. And I keep walking and the car keeps kind of rolling slowly. And then they go, come on, little girl, we've got... And I kind of stopped, and one of the guys started getting out of the car, and my older, the older of my two brothers had gotten to the corner already, and he turned around and was watching, and he saw this, and he come hauling ass back towards me, because I was like looking at the guys in the car, and looking at my brother, and looking at the guys in the car, and then I started walking again, just as the guy was getting out of the car, and here comes my brother, and... This is the brother that, I mean, he, if he would have gone out for track, he had a job after school. But if he had gone out for track, he was the second fastest kid in the high school. And the fastest kid in the high school held the state record for the 100-yard dash. So my brother was very fast. Mm -hmm. And he's hauling ass back. And he's not even, like I would say, 10 steps from me. When all of a sudden the guy in the car notices him and gets back in the car and they pull out burning rubber. And, you know, I never really, I mean, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because it was like, we, I don't know this guy. Who is this guy? What the heck? But it was that same year that at Halloween, some college kids, I was half a block from home and college kids knocked me down and took my bag of Halloween candy, which... You know, we, we were almost home, so I had a shit. I had a haul. Mm -hmm. So in this in this little time frame, I learned that there is such a thing as stranger danger. Mm -hmm. And you know, seeing all of this stuff now coming out about, um, I know this is a weird segue, but this is where my brain went. All this stuff coming out about eight hundred thousand kids just in the U.S. alone go missing every year. Mm -hmm. And remembering this memory, it's like, holy shit, you know, 50 years ago, that could have been me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just having that little, little bit, and I'm from small town. I mean, at that time, the town was only like 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I'm from small town, and I it's like wow, and and people in the big cities, I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine how how easy it is, especially with families that are homeless and stuff. And you know, mm -hmm. their kid turns up missing, and do the cops do anything? Well, what can they do? Mm -hmm. So that's that's my segue into. Mm -hmm. People get this shit out there. There is human trafficking going on. There are children being stolen all the time. Mm -hmm. 
and there but for the grace of God goes any one of us. Mm -hmm. So step up. And I know you say fuck the children, but I know you don't mean it like that. Well, how I mean it is instead of raising a generation or two of fucking pussies like they did, Mm -hmm. they could have not did that. We wouldn't be where we are. Anyway, so I I called your little rant. Hey, little girl, want to buy some candy? And that's basically, well, what it you is. want a piece of candy. Same but thing. Yeah, that's yeah. basically what it was. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, I don't know. But you reminded me, okay, when I was nine, my my parents lived about 300 miles from my grandma. And mm-hmm. they they didn't give us a choice, so to speak. Well, we're going to grandma's. So we went to grandma's. And I, I went, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I don't really want to be here at grandma's. We, and w- my mother's mom lived around the block from us where we lived in L.A. So mm-hmm. we were visiting my father's grandma, my father's mom. And I wanted to go back home. And my dad put me on a bus with a uh, 20 bucks in my pocket for food and whatnot. Told the bus driver to keep an eye on me. And the next driver, if he changed, make sure he gets on the right bus. And they did. Everybody did for my father what they asked. And I made it home, 280-mile trip or whatever, on the Greyhound when I was nine. Mm-hmm. And to, because I didn't, because I voiced my opinion, said I'd rather be down with, with the other grandma. He says, oh, okay, you should have said something when you were home. Here, we'll put you on the bus and send you back. Yeah. Nine, nine years old, this is how, how uh, safe L.A. was when I was a child. To me, because nobody, and I'm, I, maybe I'm just too ugly of a child that nobody wanted to molest for me or something. I don't know. But nobody wanted to molest for me when I was a kid. They left me all alone. Oh. Yeah. And now I hear all these horror stories from everybody about, they were gang raped by a football team of aliens from the planet porno and just horrible shit. And now. Yeah. My dad whipped me a couple, you know, times a month, sometime. <clears throat> anyway, he was a mean fucking guy, but, you know, that, it, it's like when you know the devil, then the devil doesn't scare you, I think. Yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah. It was hard to terrify me when I was growing up, because he was both a generous man and a prick, and all rolled up in one ball. It was very weird. And when you would, uh, when he would associate with people that would associate with me, he was a different person. They would never, in a million years, guess that the guy was a psycho. Hmm. Well, I had children, and I got mad at my kids, but I never lifted a finger, or I would yell at them, because yelling will fucking terrify you when some giant's yelling. That's one thing, but never thought of ever hitting a kid. So, because it was embedded in me. Uh, nah, this ain't right. It's already new. But some people, uh, they're raised by the whip and they carry the tradition. They think right, that's the only way to do it. And I didn't think so. I thought, nah, you'd have got way more out of me if you would have been nice. Yelling and beating and all that. Fuck you. Just made me mean. You know, mm-hmm. so when I had my own kids, then when the kids wanted something, I was... Uh, Never violent about no. And they took no pretty well. Considering, you know, word is just ugly. Especially to a kid when they want something. You know, how do you tell a yeah. kid no? Why? Why in the world do you tell a child no? I think I narrowed it down to if it was going to be a dangerous thing for them to do it. And then I didn't want to, you know, show them things that they might try behind my back. Yeah. So I narrowed that stuff down to things you'd get caught. If you got caught, you they'd know exactly. Like uh, I showed them how to light a fire with my eyeglasses, and they were all like, "Oh, wow!" And I told them if anybody gets a bright idea to snatch my glasses and do this behind my back, boy, you wish you didn't. And that's all I said. I never threatened. I just said, "Oh, you wish you didn't." And they knew, because if I was like a I, I, I think I, how I hurt people with, is with silence now, and for the last probably 45 years. Silence seems to be uh, worse than punching or yelling or any of that. 
Oh man, yeah. I would have much rather had my mom spank me than than ground me. Oh, I hated being grounded. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Just beat me, mom. Get it over with. <laughs> Those bruises will go away. But which she did leave bruises once. And she was she was mad. Yeah, she but we, people do stupid fucking things, and you know that that was. I think what I taught myself was that, you know, I'm just like everybody else and I do shit that I shouldn't do. Why would I expect anything different out of my own children? What what the fuck? Are they from another planet? No, that's supposed to be, you know, my reproduction. So it's going to mirror me in some areas. Let's hope it's not the, the stands that I take in a mental fashion. <laughs> but they did. Well... I did swap my children's hands, <coughs> excuse me, a few times. Wow. I was like, see, I, I've got a voice that's terrifying to a four-year-old or a ten-year-old. So I never had to do any of that. Just yell a little bit and they go, oh! <laughs> well, and, when you've got you, a child reaching for a cactus. Oh, no. Pop see, their hand away. That, that's, um, nah, that's where I Or a child it. reaching for a pan on the stove and you got to bop their hand away because you know if you yell at them they're going to close their hand and yeah so bop the hand away and both of my girls did get a pop or two on the butt yeah but i i never i never yeah yeah i understand it was usually that. an yeah. attention getter but see i can understand it but it's still just losing your temper there's never a there's never a call for violence as far as attacking somebody else. It's never justified. We'll justify it in all the kinds of ways that we do, but it's still bullshit. Defending yourself wouldn't be necessary if somebody doesn't attack you. So, how do you avoid being attacked? What is the key to uh, recognizing the foe out there that will do these things to you? Hmm. Is it a matter of geography? Is it a matter of uh, how they're dressed? How pe- you know? There's... All these things that were taught through the TV, that are just bullshit. <laughs> you know? Watch out for the quiet guy. It's always the quiet ones that'll get you. No, the loud screaming fucker at the door with the machete. Now, he's the one I'm worried about, George Carlin. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, but see, society teaches us the creepy guy in the corner that's reading a book is planning to murder you. You know, well, the guy that walks in the fucking front door with an axe in his hand, you serve him a drink. Worry about the guy in the corner that's not doing anything. And this guy has rights. He's within his rights. An axe is legal. Don't worry about it. What? So, we, what I guess what I'm getting at is we tend to take law, your words, and form them in ways that please and soften but don't solve fuck all. And when you get to the punishment part of your problem, you got to understand, you got to break the fucking rule first. So it doesn't matter if the rule is there or not. (laughs) But what matters is what you teach the children to do. That's what matters. Yeah. So I guess what I learned is if you want a child to grow up that's not going to have an attitude and be violent, don't beat them. But... (laughs) Whoops. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> what? You get what you pay for. I see that works, but, mm. I mean, all of us kids yeah. got whoopings. There are times Dad would whoop us just because he misheard something and he yeah. lined us nah. all up. Crazy. <clears throat> but I think each and every one of us went, we're not doing that to our kids. Exactly. Well, that's something special about the 60s, because okay? our generation saw that. Where the 50s didn't. The 50s were still stuck on corporal punishment. This is the only way. And they found all this bullshit in the middle to you know, make everybody quiet and happy, but they still never got to the truth, which is stop raising your fucking children to be psychos. Well, and I think a lot of that possibly came came about when women's lip and... Working outside the home and you know lo- and letting someone else raise your child mm. and you know I'm not going to fault anybody. Hell, I worked outside of the home mm. 
and I had babysitters for my kids. And I also, when a babysitter said something that I didn't agree with, I corrected my children. And then I also informed the babysitter, uh, this shit don't wash. Mm. Ain't going to happen again. Wow. So, you know, it's it's called being the adult in the room is what it's called. Uh, you know, and, and yeah, you can encourage your kids to be creative and all Good Lord, I can't tell you how many plays my children put on for me. That, And they were some of them were like 30 seconds long, and some of them were a half an hour, and you're going, is it over yet? Mm. <laughs> but, you know, they also had discipline. They also knew, hey, you know, just like they didn't clean up their room. They got told twice. After the second time, if it wasn't done, I went in with the trash bag, and they knew it. Mm. Because they'd get told. (laughs) First time they get told, get your room cleaned up. Second time, if you don't have that room cleaned up in such and such time, I'm coming in with the trash bag. And that first time I went in with the trash bag and carted off everything that wasn't where it was supposed to be, you should have seen them great big eyes and the wide open mouths and the, did she really? And they did not get that stuff back. So, you know, my children learned there are consequences. Well, well, yeah, but see, as you grow up, to like I did, I partnered off, and partnerships tend to influence your uh, your behavior to other people outside of your partnership. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm bringing up the mask again, because mm-hmm. uh, one person is so intelligent that they've researched all the possibilities and everything that could go wrong, and they've decided that. Wearing a mask is essential. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, that's their fucking ultimate decision based on all the information that they've read or seen. Mm-hmm. And they are fucking ass wrong, and there's no way you can explain it to them because they've chosen. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, if Cirque says that if they go all masky here, she's going to comply. And I say, man, if they go all masky, uh, I'm in trouble. Because I won't do that. But in the winter time, I'm not adverse to wearing a scarf because it's chilly as fucking, you know, cold out there. And I like mm-hmm. to walk. And I don't give a fuck if it's snowing. I'm walking, <laughs> raining, snowing, ninety degrees. It doesn't matter. I'm out there. But they're going to have this mask. That, see, they're threatening the public here with it already because of the second wave. Because you've got enough Danes convinced that this is real. That just enough to keep the COVID story going. So, <sighs> fuck. But not as deep as the states or England. Good God. The English-speaking countries are making complete fucking fools of their societies with all this drama. Oh, they, yeah. they look oh, like yeah. morons from a distance. Oh, yeah. I, I yes, feel sorry. You know, Bee, Bee's down there in Australia. And Australia is way tighter than Denmark. Probably oh, yeah. tight as America. I've seen a few things. She finally put up a post on RLO a couple of weeks ago. She's not feeling very sociable. I, I still miss her, but, you know. She pops her head in every once in a while just to let us say hi, let us know she's still around. Yeah. Yeah, it was giving. I, giving I her see B every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, but not like we used to. God, we used to see her daily. Well, I think she's I think she's pretty busy too. I would hope, but see all these things that um, are happening in society. You take them however personally I think you want to, but when you start telling other people what they can and cannot do, oh my God, that'd be like me telling Cirque, "You're not wearing no fucking mask. What are you stupid?" Now telling her that would be the same as telling her. Uh, to wear one, not to. It doesn't matter what side. What right have I got to tell my wife to wear a mask? Are you stupid now? Nah. Or to tell her not to wear exactly. a mask. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. What difference does it make to me? I mean, I'm not... She's not going to hurt me wearing it. She's not hurt me not wearing it. It's it's only when, when it comes to me, it's a matter of principle that I cannot define in words to other people. I'm not afraid and... You're not telling me what to do doesn't seem to translate. 
even in English, there's still people on our Real Liberty Media that are mask promoters. Why? I don't know. What's your fucking why? You want me to do what you're doing? Fuck you. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's the same as people that pay taxes. Well, why don't you have to pay taxes? Well, if I have to pay taxes, you should have to pay taxes. Uh, sweetheart, actually, read, read the book. Read the guidelines. It's voluntary. Read the actual... Yeah. It is voluntary, yeah. yes. And what is it, like 87% of all taxpayers yeah. really don't have to pay taxes? Probably. And the yeah. other ones, it's not an income tax per se. It's it's, But it's... Yeah, it's unconstitutional. But since when does unconstitutional mean shit? Uh, okay, but, but here's the but ego. But there's an awful lot of people out there going, well, if I have to, then you have to, too. It's just like, this tastes awful. Here, you drink it, too. Okay, but Mary... Jim Jones, look, I got poison Kool-Aid. <laughs> Y'all get to drink it, too. I don't know. But you got all these people that are uh, taking other people's word for shit that they don't really know is true in the first place. Yeah. So... Uh, Wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, drinking Kool-Aid, not drinking Kool-Aid. I always felt that my life was in my hands to do what I want with, how I want to do it. And when people start telling me what I can and can't do, wait a minute, I got married already. I got one of those at home. I don't need you to do it too. <laughs> you know, because being married, you're going to have guidelines to live within. Or you're not married, you're just... Matter of convenience or some shit. Well, it's called mutual respect. No, it's not. No, it's called a matter of how you choose to live your your life. Some people, well, be, it be it could be defined however you like to. But I'm just making the point of, you know, when I got married to Cirque, I took it seriously, and I could have not taken it seriously and used it as a stepping stone to other shit. But that wasn't why I came to Denmark. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, well, right, but I, in the beginning, it was so horrible listening to, like, what was his name? Coswell. Coswell the Magnificent had all kinds of opinions, and I'm just trying to, you know, get this girl. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. But, yeah, I learned I was a tax evader and a, an escape artist and all the horrible names that I, were attached to me because I met a woman in Denmark. And I live outside of the normal lifestyle. So people were assuming that I live like they do. <laughs> and what they must have to go through to do what I did would be treacherous. But to me, it was just moving from one country to the other. It wasn't, you know, wasn't, a, wasn't a big social shock. It was just, wait a minute. I wonder if this girl is real or not. Because the Internet can lie to you. Yes, it can. You know? Well, but not afraid to find out. Now, I don't have the interest to find anything else out. I think I'm done. I found a comfortable place to retire and grow old and croak. There you go. And without America to entertain me, I would be a little bit bored. Because <laughs> I'm from the city where, you know, people shoot each other at 4 o'clock in the morning because the pizza was late. So... Because the pizza was late. Well, that it was sounds a bad like example. that gal that went to the McDonald's and was pissed as hell and started throwing a pissy fit because they were out of Chicky McNuggets. Yeah, well, that's, see, the mental state that the system is capable of putting us in. These are not natural behaviors of human life. These are additives from drugs and outside influences. Because if, you, if you're in a, a society, a relatively small social gathering, people are just generally nice to each other. You know? Like today, okay, I'll give you another beer drinking thing today. I go to have a beer. I'm sitting outside because inside you can't smoke during the day because they serve food. And, uh, rules, rules, rules. So I just go sit outside with my beer. This guy at across the street, uh, the what? it's like a, enough room for a truck to drive through and sit and have tables. And uh, across the that area, on the opposite side, is uh, like a cafe, restaurant thing. They serve ice cream and shit like that. The guy comes, sits with his wife over there, and they order up some food from the little girl and whatnot. And then he goes to the bar and he gets himself a pint. 
And he goes over there and he sits down and he drinks it. And when he's done, he brings the glass into the bar and puts it on the bar for the owner. Hmm. And I thought, in the city I'm from, you would never see that kind of self-awareness about a glass of beer. The guy would just leave it where he was sitting and go on his way. Well. But in this case, he took it to the table in the other place's business. It was just fun to watch. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not explaining it too well. But it was heartwarming, kind of, to see people just behave and act out and do shit that could turn disastrous, but they think of each other in simple ways. So they, some of them clean up after their self a little bit. They don't just dump it for the next poor fuck to pl- pick up. Not there every, you go. not every, well, it's a dying thing, though, because we're, I'm a litter bug with my cigarette butts, but I try to put them in places, I butt them try to find me a trash can and sometimes Mm -hmm. i'm so fucking high i don't care (laughs) but i feel the guilt of being a slob when i recognize that i do it and i go hmm maybe i ought to be pay more attention and you know change that behavior maybe well instead of bitching at other people i just try to change me is, I guess and that was see? that was the point of the last ten minutes of nothing was filling up the time on the radio <laughs> with some words. <laughs> but, there you go. Uh, well, life is so easy when I just let it be, and I'm not trying to force my thing on anybody. And people don't try to force anything back. We meet in the middle and chat a little bit and say goodbye. <laughs> it's kind of cool. There you go. Yeah. You know what Cirque did? What? What Cirque do? She grew cucumbers. Sweet! Yeah, you know what I else? got cucumbers from my brother. See? Because mine aren't doing anything yet. They're oh. just doing the blooms. Oh, yeah. Well, see, now she knows, too, the yield by the blooms, because she's done it before. And she said, wow, I'm going to have a shitload of cucumbers. We can't eat all these. So I went to the bar today and I mentioned that to the bartender. Hey, can you guys use cucumbers? Oh, yeah, we use them in the cooking. Sure. So whatever excess we have, we just take them to the bar. And then there's people at the bar. Hey, you got cucumbers. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and tomatoes, too. So when there's too much for us, we'll just give it away. That's pretty much what I do, too. Right. And you it's know, not and like... A lot of times I'll take... Yeah down to mother yeah. Yeah. she loves cucumbers and tomatoes but yeah my neighbor didn't get to get a garden in this year because she was busy you know having to go help a sick friend and stuff like that so i told her well when my garden pr- starts producing it's gonna be a little late because it's taken me a little while to get it in but mm. you know she knows she'll get tomatoes and cukes and cantaloupe and whatever else because mm. That's just what we do, you know. She watches out when we're gone. She watches the place, makes sure nobody messes with it. Mm. And I give her free vegetables. Ah, <laughs> free. Mm. Isn't that something you need a license to eat? Something else. That's what I call any transaction you do with commerce, you know, fiat currency. Mm. Ah, that's a license to break a law. Why is it against the law to eat? Because if you don't profit from it, (laughs) some Jew won't get his million, million, million. You know, what? Get the fuck over yourselves. So as I sit here watching this domino thing just collapse from far away. Wow. See, and I'm just not even really watching it anymore. I mean, I, I, I enter and... That's my own thing. You know, It's that's the price I have to pay, the cross I have to bear to be able to keep up with some of my siblings as I stay on Facebook. Well, but then I deal with their children. And mm. it's like, I know your parents raised you better than this. How but is then it? again, another part of me goes, okay, mm. their parents raised them to come to their own conclusions and be responsible for their own decisions. But man, oh man, they're, they're, that I know their parents raised them better than that. Yeah, but how, how is your mom taking 
being put in the uh, the eye of the hurricane as the old the old woman you have to behave this way around to see anymore blah blah you know if that was me that's how I'd feel like they've just just disturbed my balance of everything with all these fucking rules that I don't even want to obey in the first place. Well, mom is home now. Uh uh-huh. And and she's a happy camper. She was kind of sort of surprised because they, when they uh, redid the the house, they moved the washer and dryer upstairs, so she doesn't have to go downstairs for anything. And they, um, but she, you know, there's a there's like a little kid gate or something across the stairs, so she doesn't accidentally fall down the stairs. But, um, you know, it's kind of sort of partitioned off. And they got rid of her stove because she really doesn't use it anyway. And it only had one burner that was working. <laughs> but how how was she handling so they, the mental shift, Mary? Not not the furniture. The, well, see, and no, but see, this was because my brother was telling her all the different things that they were doing to the house to let her know before she came home, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't be too much of a shock to her because she did an awful lot of balance oh, back yeah, and forth that, between. Okay. Yeah. The rehab facility and the hospital, because yeah. you know, she kept having issues and getting sent back to the hospital. It's been about a month, right? But fifty-one days. I didn't realize Two it months. had been that long until my brother wow. told me. It's like holy shit! It really has been that long. Wow. But in any case, her piano is now gone. Found somebody that would take that. Which the piano just held pictures. She never played it. She got it so that my younger siblings could play and. Yeah, it's been sitting there collecting dust and pictures ever since. Mm. So we found a home for the piano, got rid of the stove, uh, got rid of a few other things that were pretty rickety and needed to go anyway, and did some rearranging so that she can easily motivate with her walker because she's still using a walker to get around, you know, until she gets her balance back. Mm. But I have a niece that's staying with her that's an RN, and when she lived in the state, she... You know, she was an RN for geriatric patients. So she's absolutely amazing with mom. And when I called down this morning, Rochelle answered the phone. And she and I chatted for a bit, and then she gave it to mom. And mom was going, well, Rochelle and I did this, and Rochelle and I did that. And then we went and did this, and now we're going to go do that. What day is it again? Rochelle and I went and did this. And so... She had a little bit of culture shock with the rearranging. She likes the way it's rearranged, but a little, little bit of culture shock. But, oh, my God, Rochelle has been a godsend for her, and she's keeping her company. And, yeah. and my little sis, just younger than me, uh, sent me a text yesterday that she had called Mom, and she was chit-chatting with her, and Mom goes, well, Rochelle's here, so I have someone to talk to, so I'll talk to you later, and then hung up on her. Wow. And she was like, but mom, but mom. <laughs> and when she sent me that text, I was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Wow. I've had that happen to me I don't know how many times because I would be talking to mom on the phone. And next thing you know, she'd look at her phone. She'd go, Susie's calling. I'll talk to you later. Click. But mom, well, I didn't even get to say I love you. But she, mom. Is she aware of all the drama being done in the name of the mask around her? Is what I was leaning to. No, no, because uh. nobody wears a mask around her. Oh, okay. And, and yeah, I got told that I'm a big old meanie poo-poo head because I don't wear a mask, and I said nobody wears one around Mom. She wouldn't like that, right? No. she Well, she wouldn't be able to hear you. Her hearing is not that good, and she <laughs> likes to be able to watch your face <laughs> as she's talking uh. to you. So, no. Yeah. Well, see, there's the thing about being older is we're we're less afraid. We're the ones that are supposedly uh, most likely to fall victim to this deadly, lethal virus, and yet it's yeah. it's the young young women mostly that I've seen doing all this complaining. I've not seen. All, I've I know there's guys doing it, but maybe I just refuse to look at that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, it's I'm, bad enough I, to see a woman screaming at somebody for not covering their face. <laughs> wow. Oh, and you know, I I wow. have been a smart ass and been not so nice and said, "Oh, so you like the uh, hijab light, the burqa light? Ooh. Yeah, go yeah. ahead and do that." You know what? I would think it, but I don't. I don't think I'd 
I'd be comfortable here yelling at anybody about it because too many variables, and it happens so infrequently, it's, it, does, it doesn't require attention. It's not like one out of five people are doing it. It's like every couple of weeks now when I go out, I see somebody with a mask. It's been like a week and a half since the last time I saw one. And the woman wearing it wasn't wearing it. She had it wrapped around her ears and her chin. So, I don't know. I would just assume she's not feeling good. I didn't want to... Hey! Nah, that just was what it made me feel bad to do that. Well, see, and I don't say... If, you know, up close and personal, I don't say anything to yeah, anybody wearing a yeah, mask. That is their uh, choice. Yeah. If they want to wear a mask, that's fine. <sighs> but if they start scolding me about then, wearing a mask, I just... Yeah. That's when I just look at them and say, excuse me. I'd get kicked all the way out of fucking Denmark, probably kick me all the way to California from here if that would t- happen. So, no. Nah. But I don't see it happening. I think, the, yeah. um, I think the big city and the intellectuals are the ones that are going to promote this nonsense, not the country folk that know better. <laughs> you can't yeah, breathe when you... Actually, yeah, we live with dirt. <laughs> you can't breathe if you cover your face, you idiot. So there you go. You don't need to think beyond that because the goal isn't so that you don't breathe. It's so that you'll get sick. But they're they're lying, just like they've lied about everything else. They're lying that the, the protection will protect you and the protection will continue to make you ill. That's what they're counting on. They they want a flood in the feet when the flu season hits again in, what, September, October, something like that. Yeah. Okay. There. All right. Well, all these idiots that have been wearing masks all summer have been cooking something in their freaking system that will probably show up the next time they test for COVID. <laughs> so it, yeah. it's a self fulfilling prophecy made possible by the morons stupid enough to do what they were told to do in the first place. And if you resist this, you stand a chance to survive in the great calling. Without illness. And if you don't resist it, you'll be whining in the chat room about how sick you are every day. Well. It's coming. I'm getting stocked up on elderberry and zinc and mm-hmm. vitamin C and vitamin yeah. D so that, uh, yeah. yeah. And I got my oils. So. What's your I'm, favorite I'm oil? I'm sounding kind of froggy today, but yeah. that's because I've been playing in the weeds. Yeah, but what's your favorite? pollinating. What's your favorite oil? You use a lot of them. Uh, my favorite oil, mm. frankincense I use a lot. Mm. Uh, this time of year, I'm using an awful lot of lemongrass and citronella to keep the skeeters away. Okay. Uh, patchouli is wonderful to put along your doorway to keep the critters out because they don't like the smell of patchouli. Really? Uh-huh. No shit. That's yeah, what a coincidence. Just... just, just Drops along your yeah. the threshold of your door. Yeah, overwhelming patchouli is just too much for me. I feel like yeah, I'm in a ju- uh, 1968 Volkswagen van filled with hippies. Yeah, because I live do it. like yeah. three drops along your threshold. It yeah. really isn't an overwhelming aroma. Somebody t- so. tell Mona only three drops would work. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. So. So, um but I'm I growing use it. Clo- a lot of clove and cinnamon oil. Mm. And oregano oil cuz oregano oil is a really good uh antibacterial, antimicrobial. But you know, I don't know that I necessarily have a a favorite um mm. Okay. Yeah, but frankincense for, well, came to mind. Yeah, frankincense. Mm. Frankincense, I'd say frankincense, lavender, and peppermint probably predominantly just because those are the three that I use instead of doing a deodorant or an antiperspirant. Mm. And the peppermint always goes first because it's cooling effect Mm. and you have temperature sensors for your body there. And so, you know, you don't necessarily need an antiperspirant. And then you add the the lavender and the frankincense and it, it makes... I think, a pleasant aroma. So I don't need to go to the store and buy over-the-counter any of that nonsense. And then my lemongrass for Skeeters. Hmm. So that's that's predominantly right now. Hmm. Well, we all have the same problems. Yep. Because. Because. 
Well, we live on Earth. That's and true, although, and we are surrounded by viruses and bugs and germs. And, yeah. But yeah. Al- although our climates are different, our landscaping is different, we all have the same basic, same shit. you got grass and trees and dirt and plants. Mm-hmm. And however you define them, that's beside the point. Like, Woody lives in the desert. And, yeah, you've seen the videos the guy posts up about his, where he lives. He's a beautiful place. It's undeveloped and cactus and road, roads for, uh, wide enough to ride a bike and cactus on both sides of the bike trail. Sweet. And I seen him. He took his put his uh, camera on the helmet and took a ride down that shit. And it's just beautiful to see it. I don't think, you know, I'm not dying to go home and see the desert again and all that, but it's nice to have video links from people I know where they are because I've been there before and I can see it again. So it's really, I appreciate that. And you think, yeah, had a thing with Tucson too. Ah, oh, what, boy, it grew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, and I, that's. A couple of my friends, uh, I have a friend in um, Ireland that she'll send me videos of what she does with her girls. And then I'll send her pictures of uh, my garden and the yard and the doggies and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, just to, it's kind of a, a touch base and to let you know that, yeah, it's really not all that different here hmm. than it is. Although Ireland, where she's at, has more trees. Hmm. But, ah. It's kind of fun. It's a fun way of of sharing and keeping in touch and kind of making that distance not quite so far. Right, but what I'm I guess where I'm going with that one was just even though things are different to the eye, different to the nose, or different to the ear, they're still the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing really changes. I think me, I change, but I don't think the world, no matter where it's where I'm at in it, it's still whatever it was before I got there. No one person actually makes any big fucking dent into a society. No, that's a bunch of hoopla from the media. Real people just do things and and interact with each other, and it just happens. It's not recorded. It's not remembered. It, it's uh, used as a structure for further association. And we've just been, I don't know, duped into thinking all this big crap. And the bigger the crap, the less it matters. You know, like flying a helicopter on Mars. Who gives a fuck one way or the other? I don't, but there's somebody out there that believes it's possible or true or whatever. And so they'll waste their conscious time thinking about that instead of, hey, I wonder what Larry's got to say about electricity. (laughs) Yeah. And Larry will be the first one to tell you you're going to call me in the net job. It's Just be, be prepared to say no when you talk to Larry Woods. If you have... Existing knowledge in the in the system that exists today, you're going to tell Larry he's a nut job, and he knows that. So talking to Larry is fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a sharp guy. Well, all you got to do is just challenge anything he says, and he's sometimes he's absent-minded, and he'll make verbal error and refer to the wrong thing. I do it all the time too. But he'll correct himself. If you, oh, whoops, I made a mistake. Wonder where that came from. And he's, you know, he just fixes it. Mm -hmm. Instead of what what the government's taught us to do is lie like a Kennedy. (laughs) But that's another story. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Grimm did a pretty interesting job with Gary L. about Kennedy, but there's so much to this. One hour. Fuck, you could talk about Kennedy probably for a week of hours. Yeah. There, I mean, not all the components connected to it, you know. It's huge. And here we are in 2020 fighting about masks. <laughs> it's like they didn't learn shit, Mary. The, the, the public is totally collectively brain dead. Don't depend on them for shit. They will fuck you up. They're killing each other in the streets. Like uh, like it was the Tombstone days, you know. They think they're Doc oh, yeah. Holiday out there. Yeah, the Wild West is back, but it's more the Wild Cities as opposed to. Yeah, and the people that are showing sanity and reason are the ones that nobody's remarking about because they're not doing anything to be on the news. They're living their quiet life, 
and we'll we'll run into some of them on the chat because that you know they're not social people. They got they got property and they're living alone, which mm-hmm. is wow. Some people shy away from that. I did for years. Now it's like wow. I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> but well, you know, everything happens in its own time. I get. I don't, I'm comfortable where I am. How things are. I'm just saying. If I was in America. I would be striving for the opposite of what I was raised for. I was a city dweller, Miss Mary. I was born and raised, taught how to handle the streets of Los Angeles, not get killed. And I managed to do that. Well, and I was one of them, their country bumpkins, that every time I went to the city, somebody always had to keep me out of trouble because it was like, country bumpkins, we see some shit going down that's like, hey, 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 hey. You're not supposed to be doing that crap. And so some city dweller would go, no, 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 don't get involved. Don't look, don't. Well, I'm still a country bumpkin. And that's, Last time I was in the sweet. big city, you yeah. know, we went to Denver and my daughters were, don't make eye contact. Oh, I know. Don't smile I at them. Bang. Don't talk to them. Wow. Really? Seriously? These people want to be acknowledged that they exist. Yes. Wow. Exactly. See? And these are things that I see here. Nobody told me. Just see, when old, when somebody's walking by my table and, and I'm sitting there drinking my beer and they got a walker and they look at me and smile, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I smile back. That's the whole point of the interaction from the first place. But yeah. what, some people are so full of their self, where I'm from, wouldn't take the time to recognize what I'm seeing. It, it's alien to me because I know where I came from. But I've adjusted to where I'm at because I've been here so long. You know, it's like acclimating. I've just acclimated to the Danish behavior without learning the be- the local language. Well, you know, and some behaviors are easier to acclimate to than others. Being nice to each other is a whole lot less work than swinging a ball bat and throwing mace and all that kind of shit at each other. I, I don't oh, yeah. want to do any of that. Starting fires. And I'm good at all this violent shit, I suppose, but I don't really want to do it. Too much work cleaning it up, you know, and I'm here. So the last thing I'm going to ever fucking do is try to re- ruin where I live. No, no, no. Well, see, and I just... I'm not a big fan of pain. No, no, me neither. And no. so I try and avoid it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I I try not to start any shit. You don't start no shit. You don't get no shit. Now, occasionally there are people that are the exception to the rule, and they will start shit. Then I will deal with it as I deem fit. Right. But for the most part, yeah. it's like, really? Ah, uh, no. You know, My life is so boring. Face, I have to turn the TV yeah. on to see a fight. Even Cirque doesn't, nah. She gets a little hot at me once in a while, I'll raise her voice or something, but eh, it's not, it doesn't go anywhere. You know, it's like, eh. You know, Wayne and I have not had a fight yet. Wow, you guys are behind. Come on. I know. Break so on through. Well, we've known each other for Forever. over 30 years, yeah, but so, we've been, yeah. we've been together That's, for almost four. Yeah, but that kind of closeness so. brings that up. Uh, Comfort level where you can be your real self around somebody else, no matter what. Yeah. Well, sometimes uh, we get mad. I Maybe not you, but I do. I, I get mad. <laughs> so what? Ten minutes well, later, yeah. I don't even know what the fuck I was mad about ten minutes ago. Because I'm old. <laughs> there are times when I get frustrated with him. Hmm. But I, t- I do the little... What did I hear the other day? Turn the other cheek is not intended to mean that you turn the other cheek and let them smack you again. It's basically the count ten, count to ten move. Mm. Now, it has to necessarily mm. count to ten, but take a deep breath before you react. Mm. And so if he does something that makes me go, oh, what the, what the actual, and then I just shake my head. And usually I just look at him and go, what are you doing? Mm. And he starts laughing, and I start laughing, and then I go, seriously, dude, what in the hell are you doing? Mm. And then we talk about it. Duh. Because you know, we made a promise to each other mm. that we were not going to lie to each other. We were not going to 
fight over shit. We would sit down and we would talk. Yeah, yeah. And well, so that's, that's a, what we do. That's a lot easier to do with somebody you have a 30-year history with in the first place. Well, yes, it is. But yes, it's, it is. it's Even not... Even though it's... Yeah. It's not a hard contract to verbally follow. I mean, it's simple, no. to the point. But not a lot of us would think of that being in a new thing. See, Me and Cirque have been well, together for six years now. So, you know, this is kind of... That's it. Yeah, that's just the way it is. And, yeah, even though Wayne and I have known each other that long, we worked with each other for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. His kids went to school with my kids, but his wife, you know, at the time was the one that followed because he worked for the railroad, so he was gone a lot. So I had to you know, get I had to beg Cirque to give me my headphones back before the radio podcast because you guys were. Well, she was giving you a little what for, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, she was, but that's okay. And I understand, and bless her heart, I know where she's coming so from. So do I, yeah. I really yeah. do. Yeah. But you know there's but a part of her are, that... You know, you get to the point where, yes, I understand acquiescing. But we live under a voluntary... We live under a voluntary system, but we're hearing the results of mandate from a free country. What? See, in my... My whole thing is I can I can back off. I can say, hey, you know what? Your decision, you got to live with it. I'm backing away, but I'm not going to do the choice that you. And see, to me, that is that's backing down. That's giving in, but that's never good enough. It's it's well, you still need to. Uh, why? 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 Please tell me. I am I am starting to respond like a five year old. <laughs> why? 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 And I'm gonna keep asking why until I get a logical, factual answer. Oh. But if I just keep getting shit thrown at me like, Well, you're a grandma killer and you're inconsiderate and you're just infantile and it's like, Okay, I can do the infantile really good. I don't think I wanna kill a grandma. No. And inconsiderate yeah. Yeah, I'll remember how inconsiderate I am the next time I hold the door open for someone. Yeah, I'm so inconsiderate. So, yeah, no. Yeah. Why? Why am I? Society but, has decided for you. Well, and see, I never get that in a face-to-face -face interaction. I never, yeah. ever Duh. have gotten a face. It's always been on the interwebs yeah. that someone deems to judge me. Mm. Based on, and hey, judge away. Yeah. Judge away. Just explain your judgment to me. I really want to understand oh. why I have the douchebag monitor or why I'm inconsiderate or why I'm so hateful or why I want to kill grandma or why I want. Tell me why. What am I doing? That's well, actually doing this. Okay. Your name came up on the RLM chat earlier today as a matter of record. And uh -huh. what I was reading from the fellows that were in the room and fellowettes was. Pretty nice. I didn't see anybody calling you um, anything nasty. They were pretty much complimenting that you're, well, you're capable of wrestling a fully uh, gassed up car on the interstate and surviving. <laughs> yes, you know, I am. But out, that was outright, <laughs> but that was, you know, that was in kindness from Grammy, was making a light of your accident, not yeah. fun of you, right? Oh, I know. Exactly. I know. But, I mean, I'm reading the stuff the guys are writing, and it all seemed very uh, complimentary, nice. So, mm, nah. See, but people in the RLM, to me, do not have an agenda. Now, I, and I know there are some that, that do put their, and there are some that I just shake my head and walk away, and it's time to go get in touch with nature and pull some weeds. Mm. But... You know, nobody's, I, I see an occasional, what I would consider an uncalled for remark, but it's like, mm, do I want to go there? Do I want to point <laughs> out that that was, hey, dude, that was totally uncalled for, or do I want to just let it ride and let them deal with the consequences of their typing mouth? Mm. So, you know, sometimes I will get involved and go, dude, seriously? But a lot I, of times... I was just reporting... That's, that's kind of the way I... Yeah. But I was just I, reporting to you that your peers that I spoke with yeah. today 
Nah. No, it was all nice. Well, I so, know. Yeah. People that know me. They we know, know you. That, yeah. That, oh, I'm a pushover. <laughs> oh <laughs> Until yeah. I'm not. Until you're not, then yeah. it's you say fuck off without saying fuck off. It's beautiful how you do it. I <laughs> I have to rely on the Stonewall fuck off where you can invite them in for coffee and they they won't stay because they're worried you might have added something to it they don't want. But you wouldn't. But the threat of it is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or not? Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. you're just imposing without be doing anything. You just make people feel stuff. You you vibrate. Whew. And I have not heard the sound yet today. <laughs> yeah, but I okay. And there's only four minutes left. And yeah, no worries, vibrate. band meter. I say bald pussy pussy all well, not all the time, but I do say it on occasion, so oh. <laughs> well, there's okay. nothing wrong with reliving your childhood, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I that that was dumb. I I take that one back. <laughs> that opens <laughs> that opens up a can of worms I couldn't even close back up. And I was just making a bald pussy joke, just in case you weren't ah. sure. And it sounded kind of pedophilic for some reason. Made, left a nasty taste in my mouth. Relive your childhood. Because when I was a child, I was a child. And when I wasn't a child, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, and I'm I'm kind of in, I don't know if I'm in my second or my third childhood, but I'm in that childhood where, yeah, I'm having fun with all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And yet I know I don't have to actually get an example from someone else, and I don't actually have to go run out in the street to find out that you could get hit by a car. So, what? you know, I'm I'm in my third childhood, and yet I'm <laughs> not doing a lot of the stupid shit that I did in my <laughs> earlier childhood. So, oh, you know, there's that. Benefits yeah. To, yeah. Well, yeah. experience. You know, I like grab the bumpers when the when the roads are icy and skating down the street behind, and they don't know that you're grabbing onto their bumper. You just no, into never, the ride. Never did that. And oh, I, yeah. I was in the city where people <laughs> people did that on skates and with bicycles and all that. Nah. Uh, I learned oh, yeah, I learned did. at fourteen. No, give the machinery a little respect. It can kill you. So. Well, yeah. Call me a pussy that. if you want to, but nah, I'm gonna, nah, I ain't gonna do that crazy shit. <sighs> well, speed limits for only twenty miles an hour. Yeah. You get a bus. <laughs> but the, you know, the guy that would grab onto a bus with a skateboard and all that shit wouldn't hitchhike to oh, yeah. Wisconsin from L.A. with no money, and I would. Yeah. They go with no yeah. money. Well, how are you going to live, truck drivers? Truck drivers like to have their trucks unloaded, and they'll pay you cash. Uh huh. There you go. Mm-hmm. If you can hitchhike, you can find a place where there's trucks. And get a ride with the truck, and already do the deal on the ride. So there was all kind. Of, see, while the other kids were in grown, you know, in their grade school crap, when I was like twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, I was doing grown up stuff, <laughs> making money. There you go. Well, I was ahead of the curve. And now there's no trucks to unload, so fuck it. Uh, that brings us to the end. We got two minutes here. It's one minute of the perfect world. Thank you, Miss Mary. Because, oh, I'll well, recap. Saturday, I struggled really bad. Oh, my God. And Rob and Larry came on and bailed me out in your stead. So, Sometimes well, I'm not I'm not good for a solo. I mean, I interrupt the shit out of you guys, but eh, if I'm alone, there's nobody to bother. It's just like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I had a good time over the weekend, and uh, my granddaughter hmm. was babysitting the neighbor's chickens. So, you know, I got to go over and help her let the chickens out in the morning, go feed the chickens, oh. convince the chickens to go back into the chicken coop at night, and... Oh. and and by the end of the weekend, Beyonce and Blondie would let me pick them up. <laughs> so they were the, they were the smaller two Apparently. of the six chickens, but you know I had a fun weekend and, mm. and got to play with chickens and and grandkids and my daughter and 
got a new cup and got a new T-shirt. And so, yeah, I had an awesome weekend and got fish. My son-in-law caught fish and brought home uh, gar and channel cat. So, yeah, I got fish, too. Yay. So, in any case, it's 4 o'clock. <laughs> My time. So, thank you, Slasher, for letting me play along and oh. letting me kind of go off on tangents. And thank you, everybody in the Chitter Chat, for listening. Night, everybody. <laughs> Night. <laughs>